Augusta Prep in the seventh grade. Some might call that being fashionably late. He has been very active in athletics here at Prep, playing soccer in the ninth grade, and finally football and baseball, quickly, in the twelfth grade. Colored Sports Prep Sports these last two years as a member of the student section, and he has shown his interest in the world of politics by leading the seventh grade class as president. Outside of prep, Cullen enjoys playing church league, league basketball and going fishing, as well as curating his footwear collection and reading The Taming of the Shoe. Oh, no. I guess in some ways you might say he's a little clothes minded. <laughs> too much about fashion. I mean, these skinny jean styles, I just can't get into them. <laughs> have you ever been late to school because you don't know what to wear that day? Well, I haven't, because I usually come to school in the clothes I slept in. For all the people who can relate to that question, I can respect that. Fa fashion not includes not only clothes or att other attire you wear, it also defines you as a person. Hence why I come to school every morning with like I just woke up, because I most likely did. But every now and then, you will see me in some nice attire on. This typically occurs when I'm sitting on a good night's rest and don't have to look forward to any tests or quizzes that day. As Muchi Alfredo once said, what you wear is how you present yourself to the world, especially today, when humans' contacts are so quick, fashion is instant language. Now you might be wondering how I even got into fashion. But the way my mom shops, it must be in my blood. We both love shoes. I even had to get her a pair of Kanye West Yeezy Boost 350, which my sister took from her only a few days later. Basically, my whole family loves clothes and likes to dress nice, although I wouldn't say my sister and my dad have much style. <laughs> Especially when my sister FaceTimes me from college, asking for my opinion on outfits she's going to wear that night. <laughs> Ever since I've gotten into fashion, I've been interested in how it's changed over time, dating all the way back to the first Homo sapiens to wear clothing. As time went on in early Mesopotamia, the men, the men, <laughs> the men wore a loincloth with a string at the waist acting like a belt, later developing into a skirt held by a belt. These pieces of clothing were often decorated with fringe. Women, on the other hand, typically wore a shawl, fabric wrapped around the shoulders like a scarf. In early Egypt, linen was the most common textile used because of the extreme heat. Wool was also tenable, but it was considered impure by some religions. The only people that were, wore clothing made out of animals were the rich. Men at this time wore skirts called as shindai. Women wore dresses called kawasaris. The length of the dress determined social status. The shorter the dress, the less money the woman had. The Roman men changed from a purple-edged toga to an all-white toga at the age of 16, and women would wear a, wear a tunic called a stola. Through the 5th and 6th century in England, all people dressed the same and didn't use clothing or jewelry to indicate social class rank. Fast forwarding to the 7th through 10th centuries, clothing did not change significantly. But, still, but people still wore common pieces such as tunics, cloaks, jackets, and pants. In the 1700s, men did not dress as formal anymore, only for special events. For everyday wear, men put on a wool coat and a hat, while women wore a stay, which was acting like a corset. <coughs> a stay served to help a woman keep good posture and was first put on the girl as a toddler. By the 1800s, women's dresses got puffier and the men's breeches got longer. For a more formal look, riches were replaced by pantaloons or trousers. The coats had tall collars and were cut in front of which tails in the back. The shirt also had collars and men typically wore a cravat around their necks. Women's style did not change during this era. They still wore stockings and corsets with a kerchief around their neck because of the amount of skin they were allowed to show. Clothing had a bit of a change in the 1900s. Women still put on corsets, but wore dresses or skirts, sometimes ankle high. Men now, men now would wear trousers and suspenders or belts to keep their pants up. They wore collared shirts with an additional vest over the top. At the end of World War I, clothing began to be more colorful and eye-catching. 
women became more independent and skirts or dresses were now shorter than the top. <coughs> Leading up to and through the 20s, clothing had progressed and came up with a variety of colors. In the 30s, the Great Depression put an end to much change in clothing because of the collapse in the economy. This set people back and many were wear, wearing, many were wearing clothing, clothes that were gloomy. After World War II, it was the 50s, brought in times of jazz and dancing. Women wore dresses that made their wear appear smaller, while men mainly wore dark colored suits. From the late 50s to the 60s, men began to wear much tighter pants because of the Beatles, who had a style originating in England and impacted everyone at this time. For women, casual dress became more unisex, typically a button-down shirt with jeans or a comfortable skirt. Late 60s, the hippie look came to style and still remained a trend all throughout the 70s. During the 80s, a popular look for women was the ballet look, which often consisted of mini skirts for women with leggings. Men's fashion at this time ranged from leather pants and jackets, parachute pants, leg warmers to nylon tracksuits, Hawaiian shirts, and very short shorts. Neon colors began to be more popular in the early 90s. Women also wore button down shirts, oversized t shirts, or leather jackets. On the other hand, men wore acid wash denim jackets polo shirts, and black leather jackets. Later into the 90s, pastel colors came into style, as well as really oversized clothing for men. In 2000, men had a more sporty look, while women would wear, usually wear mini skirts or sweatpants. The late 2000s brought leggings, oversized t-shirts, skinny jeans, tank tops, and so on. While there are definite trends and fashions, everyone has their own style of clothes they, they prefer to wear, because in this day and age, there is significantly more variety in what you decide to put on. For a casual day, I typically wear sweatpants or athletic shorts, a plain Nike or Adidas t-shirt, and possibly a hoodie depending on the weather. I credit a lot of my preferences to my obsession with shoes, all the way from flip-flops to designer sneakers. One of my favorite shoes of all time is Kanye West Yeezy Boost. He might be crazy, but his shoes are pretty comfortable. All starting with his first sneaker release of the Yeezy Boost 350 in the Turtle Dove colorway which retailed for $200 and now resells for $2,000 plus. These shoes can do about anything. They can be worn casually or in a semi-formal fit. As many of men know, rappers these days wear some extremely extravagant pieces, or as Gunn likes to call it, that overseas drip. Now you may be wondering about the specific items or brands Gunn is talking about. Generally, they include designer brands such as Gucci, Louis Vuitton, Dolce & Gabbana, or Balenciaga. To have style doesn't always mean designer clothing. It is what you prefer and the way you wear it. But for the people who don't want to spend ridiculous amounts of money on designer pieces, there is an alternative. Streetwear is taken on and the younger generation wears it because it can be worn so many different ways. Some streetwear companies include Supreme, Bathing Aid, Billionaire Boys Club, and Undefeated, which have had a huge impact on supplying its customers with a wide variety of choices. Supreme, the most popular, originated in New York in 1994. It mainly accommodated skateboarding, rock, and hip-hop scenes, but now has a wide selection of clothing for everyone. Getting these clothes is a lot easier said than done. Because of the high demand for this brand's pieces, some clothes like the Supreme Box logo are sold out before you can even log into the store's website. The markup by the resellers who managed to get these pieces can range from $50 to thousands. Although some may think fashion is all done purchases, these clothes and the way people wear them inspires others to go out and explore new clothing products. Another key aspect of, to fashion is jewelry. Many pieces have a hidden meaning or inspiration to them. <laughs> like Soldier Boy's The World Is Yours Chain, which is inspired by the movie Scarface. Or Gucci Mane's Ice Cream Chain, which is most likely inspired by a space tattoo. At any rate, a piece of jewelry does not have to have, this, have to be this outlandish sort of going buoyant. To, mean, to have meaning or inspiration. <laughs> Typically, the average person who has a piece of jewelry that means a lot to them have had it passed down through generations and are happy to represent where they came from. What you decide to put on yourself can define you as a person. It allows you to indirectly express your feelings and attitude. Personally, it puts me on <laughs> Personally, it puts my creativity to work by making myself pictures, sketch new pieces. Or either just trying on stuff and seeing how it's suitable for the outfit. <laughs> Not only is fashion something I get to think about, but a way to express myself.
According to Gianni Versace, don't be in the trend. Don't make fashion on you. But the way, but you decide what you are, what you want to express, by the way you dress and the way you look. So I thought I'd ask a few of my friends how they responded to my question, asking them how they feel when they put on a nice outfit. And they said, I feel like Big Boy from the Super Bowl. On the other hand, Jordan said, having on a nicer outfit changes my mood into being nicer to people. But I had to ask one more person, so I decided to ask the smartest man I know, Dominic. He said, I feel like a whole snack. Simple. <laughs> I hope today I have inspired someone to think about what clothes or accessories they put on and to understand the true meaning of fashion. Anyone is capable of expressing themselves through what they wear, just like what Diane Ben Persever once said. Style is something each of us already has. All we need to do is find it.